Hi campers, we're back for our second hangout of the day. I'm Ibby. I go to school in Colorado, but my hometown is Sebastopol, so I'm back for the summer and I am a counselor here at Maker Camp. Hey campers, I'm another counselor here. My name's Kelly, and I'm also an engineering intern here at Make, and I just help out with a lot of the different Maker Camp projects. Hey guys, I'm also a counselor here, and I'm back for the summer too. I go to Santa Cruz, and I'm an engineering intern here. And today, I'm going to be working on the magic photo cube that I will show you guys later. Awesome. Very okay, cool. Yeah. Hey, guys. How's it going? Pretty good. Good. Uh, Eloy, I'm looking forward to seeing that magic cube. Me too. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Sweet. Hey, um, so this is part two of uh, day 11 here at Maker Camp. Um, it's it's uh, day one of our fun and games week. And uh, today, we're joined by somebody very cool uh, and very magical. Uh, it's Mario the Magician. Hey Mario. Hey Mario. Hey. Hey guys. How's it going? Going good, going good. How are you guys doing? Great. We're, we're uh, excited to talk to you. I'm excited to be here. This is awesome. I love it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> well, Mario, where are you right now? Um, I'm just outside of New York City. I'm in oh, a small cool. town called Nyack and uh, it's like a hip little you know, artsy town, and uh, we live about 25 minutes from Manhattan, so we're pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Very How close. How about you guys? Where, where are you at? We are transmitting live from Sebastopol, California, wow. uh, in the United States, on planet Earth, in the <laughs> Orion arm of the Milky Way galaxy. So if you're a, an, an interstellar traveler, that is where we are. Come find us. Nice. nice. Um, so Mario, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, uh, well, I am a full-time uh, magician here in New York City, and I travel around surrounding cities also, like Philadelphia. And um, But anyway, I specialize in children's magic, so I have about a 40-minute show that I've been working on for seven years. And uh, I started out with a lot of cookie-cutter tricks that you would buy at a magic shop, and the past three years I've um, taken all my knowledge of electronics and I've adapted it into my show, and, and now I finally feel like I'm tasting an original, some original pieces. And um, I'm, I'm obsessed with the Arduino, so the real secret of my magic is I have multiple Arduinos during my performance. Awesome. <laughs> so cool. where did you, I have a quick question, where did you learn to build all these electronics? Um, I, I, around 2006, 2005, I stumbled on Make Magazine. I'll be honest with you, I saw it at a Barnes & Noble. I think it was their first year of publication. And uh, they had an issue about either making a cigar box guitar or some. I don't remember what was on the cover. But that was the introduction to the Arduino. And the reason why the Arduino blew my mind is because in Magic, people are obsessed with mechanical items like automatons. And uh, the idea that a microcontroller can bypass all the complicated circuitry of electronics and you could just code a motor to move when you want it to move is insanely amazing, you know? <laughs> Like, you know how hard it is to make, like, a motor move when you want it to move and then for it to delay for 15 seconds and do it again by not using a microcontroller? Try doing that. It's insane, you know? Yeah. So, anyway, that kind of that whole thing kind of just blew my mind, and I just started getting obsessed with the Arduino, and it was a long road. The first year was really painful because there weren't a lot of people really into it at the time, and it just got introduced into the States, and uh, so, but anyway, long story short... It, I'm so glad I, I studied it like a college course, and, I, and now I feel very confident. You know? Very cool. So you started yeah. back in, in 2007, was it? Yeah, I think right around there is when I really started making a bunch of abstract drawing machines. I have a couple back there I could show you. They just kind of draw on an XY axis based on sound, and they were super hip and cool, and people saw them, but it made me no money at all, so <laughs> it's completely pointless in that sense. Well, it's still awesome. Do uh, oh, yeah, you want to yeah. share that with us? Um, uh, yeah, I'll show you like kind of like my beginnings. This is uh... oh goodness, here we go. Let's see if we can see this. But basically, this is just a very primitive uh, drawing machine that has like a skateboard top here, and uh, oopsie, and it runs on um, uh, two, it runs on an Arduino and a shield. And I hooked up this old vintage microphone. I, I took the old mic out because it was broken. And I got it for real cheap. And I put just a modern little mic in there. And basically, it just reads sound and then just draws 
on this on this paper. And these are just recycled printers, you know. And basically, when I had parties or people come over, I would just leave it on, and it would just kind of do its thing and draw abstract drawings, you know. Um, uh, but yeah, it was cool. It was very cool, but it was not uh, entertaining people where I could, you know, where I could uh, get the laughs and create comedy, you know. And uh, but that was kind of the start. That was kind of the start. Yeah, that's a really creative piece there. I like that you use the skateboard as a base for it. Yeah. Oh yeah, like that's everything. Awesome. I I'm very like every detail is important to me. Like even the mic, because I'm a huge skateboarder. I I love having those touches, you know. So nice. yeah, me too. Like, yeah, it's more than just like garbage hooked together. I really, you know, that's how it always is. You know, it's all, like I, it's all about the details, right? Yeah. So anyway, that's that. Cool. And, uh, so, so you kind of started off there with the Arduino. That was one of yeah. your first projects. Right. Um, so you moved on to uh, to more advanced projects. Yeah. So yeah. So I started out with these drawing machines, and I'm like having people come over. I was putting them in galleries in Brooklyn. It was really fun. I had multiple ones hooked up to oscilloscopes, you know, and like, but it was very abstract. And it was cool for the moment, but I wasn't paying my rent at all, you know. So, like, that was kind of a big thing. And, and my wife, Katie, at the time was like, man, if you could adapt this weird abstract electronic stuff into your magic show, it would be insane. And it sounded so difficult at the time. But um, slowly, you know, I, I started building, you know, uh, props, and, uh, and it kind of took off. Now it's, like, kind of my whole show. Like, 80% of my show is electronic, you know. So, That's yeah, so yeah. Cool. So uh, you, you kind of combine two of your passions there, uh, electronics and, uh, and magic, and you created a, a unique show. Um, why don't you talk to us a little bit about your show? Oh, definitely. Um, uh, probably my pride and joy is my opener of my show. Uh, it's, I can give you a little demonstration if you want. Um, would you guys like that? <laughs> yes, yeah. please. Um, a big secret of mine is, like, I'm a magician, but my true magician, my magic heroes are people that actually don't do a single trick and they just like mess up everything, you know? So like, <laughs> that's kind of like my whole shtick. Like I do perform magic too, but, but this is kind of an example. Um, let's see, I want to get a, make sure I can get a good shot here of my suitcase. Can you guys see that pretty good right there? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, let me see, I'm going to tilt the camera real quick. This will be worth the effort here. I just want to Absolutely. do that. And, uh, because the important part really is the suitcase. Okay, I think that's a good angle. So anyway, at the beginning of my show, I, I do a little Simon Says thing for the kids. Mind you, it's from three years old to nine years old, so it's a lot of that kind of slapstick comedy. But eventually, um, I have the kids all kind of wiggle their fingers, and I tell them to say abracadabra, right? And then they say abracadabra, and nothing happens. And then I say, wiggle them at my box over here and say abracadabra. And there you go, the sign comes up. And then I say, everyone say up, and they say up, and little flags pop up, I don't know if you can really see them. And then I say, everyone say down, and then this little sign that says world's greatest magician comes down. Then they wiggle their fingers on top, and they say rise, and then on the top there, and there it comes <laughs> So anyway, all the flags rise, I start talking, and um, uh, we start, you know, building our routine. And I start building my, you know, just my pattern and stuff, and the flag keeps going down and up, and the kids start screaming like crazy. Can you see the flag? I don't yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of starts the mess, you know. And then I still introduce myself, and then all of a sudden, um, uh, the sign, you see how the sign just sang? Yeah. And the kids really go crazy. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is terrible, you know. And I tell all the kids to, like, put their hands like this, and I tell them to say flags up, and they say flags up, and then the flags over here pop back up. <laughs> anyway, you're getting the idea. Basically, I have no my flag vanishing. Oh goodness! <laughs> anyway, basically, I have about. I'll be honest. I have 17 servo motors built into my suitcase, making all this happen. The signs are held by magnets on each corner, and each servo pulls away just like that, <laughs> all in perfect timing while I'm talking. You know, and I start, you know, screaming at the box. If you notice, one of the flowers vanished. You see, and then when I pick this side up, the other flower vanished. And I'm like, oh my goodness! You know, <laughs> all the kids to throw the flowers back. And they say, flowers back, and then the flowers come back. And uh, anyway, now the flower falls on the floor. <laughs> Basically, it goes on and on for three minutes as I'm talking. See, the other flower falls to the floor. And uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you guys the back of the box. But 
you would have to see it in live. Hey, stop. You would have to see it in live performance, you know, to really appreciate it. <laughs> That's awesome. But you kind of did, right? Isn't it? Come on. It's totally cool, man. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> totally. And it was a lot of work because it's not just electronics and delays, but your patter to get the laps, too. Oh, yeah, there's a spring snake that pops up, too. <laughs> But um, I'll show you. I'm gonna turn this off. The whole thing is at the end of the whole routine. The the signs fall off. All the flowers fall off. The flag falls on, and then the suitcase shuts on itself as the finale. So here it goes. You see, it's all kind of going crazy. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the second one. And while I'm doing this, the kids are just screaming. You know, like oh, I'm losing this, it. Like, the worst thing in the world. You know. <laughs> And, and then here we go. And I, I'm just like, this is just terrible. You know, I cannot, I'm so sorry. Let's start from the beginning. And then, boom, the suitcase collapsed. And then that's the whole routine. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys got a little taste of it. Um, Dude, that is so cool. Let me is show that you. all timer? Oh, all of it is on the timer. All of it. Mm -hmm. And it's got an, I have an Arduino Mega. See if I can get a good close-up shot. I don't think I've ever shown anyone the inside of my magic suit. Yeah, Mario, <laughs> thanks for doing that. Um, uh, yeah, it's complete chaos, guys. Yeah. Uh, can you, can you like, tilt the camera down a little bit, Mario? Yeah, let me see. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, there's a lot of tape. You can't really see, but I mean, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six servos just on the top making the sign go off. This is like the servo that holds the flag, you know, to come down and up. And over here, there's the Arduino Mega here that's hooked up to all of my pins. And if you know about this Arduino, there's like 53 pins, so I can add so much other stuff if I want eventually. But over here, this black thing here, you know what this is? This yeah. is um, smoke. I have an electronic cigarette hooked up to um, an RC fueler. When you, know, when you have RCs, RC vehicles that need like gasoline and you've got to take the gasoline out, you buy one of these fuelers and it sucks the gas out. But instead of sucking gas, I have it sucking out an electronic cigarette, so oh, yes. that smoke comes out at the top of my uh, suitcase at the end before the before the suitcase shuts on itself. I didn't do that. I forgot to switch it on. But anyway, yeah. So that you know, that's that's kind of about it. I have a lithium battery that's about uh, like I don't know. It's like 12 volts, and it lasts forever. Like I I can perform for two months with this without it you know dying. You know. So. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that's that. That's my show opener. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was able to. <laughs> TV there, so. Yeah, definitely. Um, we already have a bunch of questions coming in for you, Mario. Um, Great. Let's see here. Question from Sue, which we just uh, answered. Have you ever revealed your secrets? Um, yes and no. Like, you know, when kids ask me, like, how does everything work, you know, I kind of, like, dodge the question and whatever and change the subject. But at the end of shows, when adults ask me, I uh, I'm pr I'm proud to show the inside of the suitcase because I want them to know that I just did, I didn't just go to a magic store and create this is my life this is my performance art this is my heart and soul you know That's so I, I want them to realize that like especially you know so I show them the inside of the suitcase I'm like look at all this electronics imagine me at an airport right you know like <laughs> come on you know step to the side sorry you know? but, uh, I didn't even think about that yeah yeah so but anyway so then they get a more deeper sense that. Because, hey, um, you know, I'm all about that. Like, I'm all about there's a richer sense to the richness. Okay, the show was good, but I want that extra feeling where they're like, oh, wow, but he built everything, you know? Like, yeah. I, that's why I'm obsessed with, with my shows because I, cause kids are – we live in a day and age where no one wants to make anything, you know? It's so easy to buy anything for cheap right now because everything is mass manufactured. We get lazy, you know? And uh, so at the end of my shows, I love when kids come up to me and ask me those questions because I really did make almost my whole show, like 85% of it, you know? So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. So, hey, um, Mario, um, what got you started in magic? Um, uh, honestly, I, I, I hitchhiked cross country from 17 to like 20, and I, uh, I didn't stop, and I met a bunch of street performers, and it just kind of started by, like that. Like, I just got obsessed with the magician who was street performing because. There was something magical about setting up in a park and having no audience and then all of a sudden just doing something so good that all of a sudden slowly people by people come and then there's a crowd and that always would fascinated me. And that kind of started the fire. And then from there I just started learning and reading other magicians, start, got into a magic club and, you know, it was like that, you know. 
That's awesome. We have a, a question here from uh, from Sam. He's wondering how many Arduinos do you own? <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't answer this because my wife is probably going to hear me. You know, <laughs> I've spent way too much money. I, that's a really great question. I have like an attic full of of weird magic trick props and and drawing machines that all run on Arduinos. I would say I have about. I would, I'm not lying, I should have at least 40, around 40, that I've used and then not used and then burnt out and then, you know, I, 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 that's a lot of money. But that's been over, like, you know, seven years, you know, of me tinkering and stuff, you know, seven, eight years. Definitely. Very cool. <laughs> um, here's another, another question for you. Uh, how do the how servos know when to go? Oh! So how do they know when to really uh, great do question. their tricks? Um, the servos know when to go because on my code, I would say, this is where it gets complicated. I, you know, I start with just one servo, like the flag servo, and I said after 13 seconds delay, you know, move, move 70 degrees, go 30, go 40, and then go back to 180. And then, so, so while I coded that for 13 seconds, in my head, I'm like, okay, what am I going to say for 13 seconds before that happens? And that's kind of how the routine started. Like, I would say, my name is Mario Marchese. I'm Mario the Magician. Welcome. Did that take 13 seconds? No. Okay, let me add a little bit more lines. And then once I got the pattern down and I got the laugh when the flag came up and I was saying the right things, I started building more props and I added the flags, you know. So basically everything runs on delay, on the delay part of Arduino. You know, oh, okay. Um, um, another camper wants to know: Would these Arduino tricks also work with a Raspberry Pi? Oh wow. Um, uh, maybe right now it could start. I I don't know because I know Raspberry Pi. I feel like is a whole other direction because that works more with the web and the internet. I I and I and I know that people um, are linking Arduinos with Raspberry Pis these days. But honestly, um, I I I I couldn't. I, I don't. I, I guess you could. I'm not sure. That's a really good question. I I know that Arduinos. Are, uh, are, I know microcontrollers in general are geared towards lighting up LEDs and making servos uh, move and stuff. So I think if it, enough research, I'm sure there's projects that have linked the Raspberry Pi, you know, with moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah. Right. So um, the RasPi has very similar input and output pins. Oh, so okay. I'd imagine you probably could. Um, oh, nice. If okay. If you wanted to, but the advantage of the Arduino is that you already have a huge library of programs, ah. you know, so you can pull in different, you know. So it's easier. Control. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm not too familiar with the Raspberry Pi because it just came out. You know, like I. Well, it didn't. I mean, it's been a little while, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, same I, here. Gotta find your niche, and then this is my niche. So, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Use what works, right? <laughs> yeah. Totally. That's cool. So how many servos did you say you have in that suitcase? Uh, 17 in here to make all the signs move the flags and you know and then there's a relay for the smoke to go on and uh, and uh, yeah so like I, I was gonna I used to have fire but you know it kind of freaked out you know kids and stuff so I don't do it anymore. You're I bring it back. Fire. That's awesome. That would come out. So like um, if I do like a big show or something where it's like on a stage or something, I'll you know I can add that on. It's not a big deal because with you know it's just you just add it to the pin and you know. Yeah. Change. So that that kind of leads into our next question here. Uh, do you only perform for kids? So do you do uh, uh, adult uh, events and uh, uh, that kind okay. of thing? I do. I mean, I don't like saying just kids. I really, my family audiences are, is what I do, you know, because I do theaters too, and, 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 and it's just family and kids, you know, and, and like, so there's a lot of jokes that adults dig and, 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 and the kids enjoy the magic. So it, it's more like family entertainment, you know, that, I think that's, I think I should be more specific. And specifically to adults, I used to do that, but um, uh, I just find like, you, you, you have to find what you're good at, right? And then you kind of just go with that. Because I know a lot of magicians are like, well, I do everything. You know, adults, kids, you know, senior citizens, you know. <laughs> and, they, and they get too thin with what they're doing. And I just kind of focused on the kids, and, uh, and it's worked out, you know. The family, the whole family style, my family audience style worked out for me. So that's my majority of work, yeah. Very nice. Cool. Hey, Mario. Um, some campers they're wondering if you've um, used any other electronics with your mag magic tricks. Oh yeah. Oh, of course. You want to see some more? Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, uh, here, let me set this up. I'll give you. I, I, I'm saving the finale piece because I have like my newest trick, and I'll give that to you guys towards the end. Cool. But right now, I'll show you some other basic stuff that I use. Um, uh, like a hat, okay? Like 
every magician wears a hat. So I'm like, how do I adapt my hat into my magic? So can you guys see my hat right now, kind of? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, so cool. So let me, uh, I do this trick with this can. Um, oh, goodness. I need a piece of paper. Let me see here. Ah, you know what? I'll just have to skip the finale part of this. But I'll give you an example, OK? Basically, do you see my hat here? All right? Um, do you see this red ball? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, all right, so I will do this, and then I will go like that, and then the ball is gone. You see it? All right, and then I can blow my nose, and then it comes out. Can you see that? Right? Now watch this. I'll do it again. Look, here's the ball. I go like this, and then look, it disappears from here. But look, look, look at my hat. You see how it popped up there? There's a little ball on the top. I don't know. Can you see that or no? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Let me see. You see the ball there? Yeah. Right. Oh, so I can take the ball out, okay? And then I will put the ball in my pocket, and then look, it reappears back. On my hat. <laughs> so, so cool. Um, uh, this goes on forever. Like you know, I, as I'm talking, I'm like, yes, yeah, the ball, man. You know, and then the kids are screaming, you know. And uh, so yeah, this is my mechanical hat that keeps feeding me uh, red sponge balls. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it and it just goes on forever. Like it doesn't stop. So, but anyway, there's a finale because I do it with a can. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, at, at the end of the trick. Usually I use a can, and I make the ball up here under the can, and then I wrap the, uh, the can up in uh, Did the ball come up again? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Let me see. <laughs> okay, so the ball's not. So usually I wrap up the paper with the can, and, and then the can vanishes, right? And then as I'm talking, it's in about 15 seconds, keep your eyes on my hat. Hopefully this will work. Not yet. The suspense is building. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. All right, here it goes. It should work. I don't know. Did it come up? Anything happened? Oh, good. There we go. go. Oh, oh, okay. But anyway, there's a can that's supposed to pop out. Oh, I left. Oh, I don't have the can here. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> the ending. Sorry about that. The ending is at the end of the routine, the can pops up on the top, you know, like that, you know. And uh, the whole thing runs on an Arduino. I don't want to get too specific on the secrets of how <laughs> the ball is reappearing, but I will tell you this: that it is all. Let's see if I can flash a light there. Let's see. Can you guys kind of see little pockets? Oh, wow. yeah. Magic, yeah. There's, so there's, yeah. Um, so anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. But yeah, so anyway, there's there's an Arduino in there. There's a bunch of servos, and uh, that's what makes the hat work. Okay, that's one of my. That's what I do on occasion uh, with my magic hat. Is uh, I do that whole SpongeBob routine. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. So. We we've got a bunch of questions coming in from campers. Um, Right. Ibby, how about we uh, we hand it off? I'll do one, and you guys can ask one. All right. Well, uh, we have a question. What kind of Arduino do you use or suggest using? Uh, Arduino Uno. I, I, you know, that's what I've been using right now. You know, the simplest, basic. You know, really, the secret is in the coding. You know, and 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 learning learning the code. You know, start by blinking an LED, and then just. Keep researching online because it's we have a vast ocean of knowledge that's just at, mm -hmm. right at our fingertips that we never I don't think we realize the power of the internet and how amazing it is. I mean I'm working on a car right now. I've never fixed a car before in my life. And I'm just watching YouTube videos and I'm replacing starters and changing brakes, you know? So I would never do that. And you would go to a mechanic to do that. Why would I know how to do that? But I'm just saying that as an example, like the internet really is what kind of saves the problems. And, and you start with an Arduino Uno and, 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 and just start by blinking an LED and then from there, you know? That's awesome. So did you, is that where you learned uh, how to program Arduino? Um, on the internet, YouTube videos? Um, the book called Making Things Talk. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. There's like a little plush toy on it. And that helped me out a lot. Getting Started with Arduino was another book. That helped me out a lot. And then just really researching online. And at the time, there wasn't a lot, dude, you know? There wasn't a lot. Like, it was very abstract. Like, you know, we have all this crazy new stuff with Adafruit and you guys with MakeScene and the Maker Shed. You know, we're really lucky. We got, there's just anything that you want to create, there's some blog somewhere that's explaining from the basics how to do it, you know? And uh, yeah. so, you know. That's great. We have, we have another question from campers. Uh, you said you use timers most of the time on your uh, suitcase. Have you ever tried voice recognition? Um, yeah, um, I have, but it's very, it's just not smart for me because 
it's so loud in an audience too, and like you have kids screaming, and and so like I was running into problems. I've tried, but honestly, the best method really, because when it's on a timer, it, you're you're memorizing it like a song. You know, like when you sing along to a song, you don't expect there's no pauses. Like you know the pauses because you sing it a million times. It's mm-hmm. kind of like that with the Arduino. Like, I, and uh, and that's what I'm really proud of is like creating comedy with electronics using the delay. There's not a lot of people that do that, man. You know, like I'll be honest, like, I haven't met one magician. Yeah. Like I'm really excited about this whole new uh, territory that I'm exploring. You know, because I feel like in ten years it's going to be way more common. You know, and uh, so anyway, yeah. Yeah, you're definitely the first person that I've ever seen that combines electronics, programming, and magic. <laughs> okay. It's pretty awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, super cool. Uh, let's see here. So we've already suggested an Arduino. Uh, I think you use mainly an Arduino Uno, right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see. Well, do you ever use a 3D printer for any of your projects or your tricks yet? Oh, yeah. I have a MakerBot. You can, it changed my life. Yeah, really? <laughs> the grand finale piece that I'm going to show you is, is a Mechanical Monkey. He's the new addition to my show, Marcel the Monkey. And he's completely 3D printed. All custom electronics, and uh, he interacts with me for three minutes. You know, the story goes when I first met my wife Katie. That I said to her, one of my dreams is to have a magic show with a real monkey. And she looked at me and she said, "You're going to either choose me or the monkey because there is no way you're getting a real." I swear, this was a real conversation where we really didn't get an argument because that's how badly I wanted a monkey. I was looking at Craigslist and everything, you know. And uh, so, anyway, long story short, I feel like the peak of where I'm at right now is this monkey Marcel because it kind of is a symbol for me when I first got into Arduino how hard it was just to bling an LED and now I've created this completely automated um, monkey uh, Marcel and he's here but I'll do this before maybe as the last thing I'll show you what he does I did a lecture on him at the MakerBot store in in New York City like two weeks ago about the whole build and stuff and uh, because I didn't put I didn't put the files online yet for everyone to download, because I don't know what I want to do with them yet, you know, as a, but, but, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I do use 3D printing, I, you know, yeah, here, look, see, I, I mean, blast this for my friend Joel, these are 3D printed, you know, nice. yeah, yeah, that's cool, um, uh, we have a question from Camper here, he's wondering if you've ever hacked any other clothing, so besides that top hat, do you have a yes. program jacket, or, yeah, you, wanna, you guys want to see that, yeah, yeah. absolutely, um, uh, so yeah, I don't know if you guys are catching the theme here, but like, I'm very obsessed with everything being self-contained and using what I have, you know? So like, for example, I really thought hard, like, I'm carrying a top hat everywhere, I need to use that space wisely, and that's why I made a mechanical top hat, so it's not just a hat, you know? And same with my jacket, I, I wear a jacket all the time, so I need to, but anyway, this jacket has 12 servos built into it, runs on Arduino. Um, do you want to see what it can do real quick? Um, yes. yes. Basic, I'm not going to go through the whole routine because I know we have limited time, but um, basically what I do is, all right, so I have the jacket on. You can see it, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so anyway, one second here. I have to get a flower to look awesome, so I will put my flower in there. And then I tell the kids to, like, look over here in my pocket. I tell them I'm going to make a magic wand rise, and I say, wand rise, and then nothing happens. And then as I'm talking, I'm saying, this is terrible. There's this beautiful silver wand that's supposed to rise. It's not working. And the kids kind of go nuts. Like, this, and I go, rise, rise. And then I look away, and it doesn't rise. The flower falls off. I go pick it up. I'm like a stumbling magician. The epaulette over here just pops. And I'm like, what is going on here? And uh, basically, you're starting to get the idea. I tell the kids to wiggle their fingers, say, rise. They all say, rise. And then nothing happens. And then my pin starts spinning over here. You know, and, and then this thing, you know, I'm like, this is not happening very well. And then I'm saying, I'm so sorry about that. What a, and now this one pops. You get the idea. They all kind of, everything just falls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your jacket's just falling apart there. Yeah, and that's the whole shtick. And, like, eventually I get the magic wand out, and uh, I vanish a handkerchief. And, uh, and then that's about, oh, and then I just do this little bit, too, where, can you see the pin here, my award ribbon? It's actually my bottle cap. It's my bottle cap award ribbon. Mm-hmm. I'll take it off here. Can you see the metal part? Mm-hmm. Watch the metal part here. Watch. I go one, two, three. It disappears from my hand and then reappears back at the jacket. You see it there? Yeah. So anyway, I kind of end with that. But yeah, that's my jacket. Yeah, yeah. 
That's it. So cool. So is that also powered with uh, an Arduino Uno? Oh, yeah. The whole thing is powered by Arduino. Yeah, there's 12 motors. It runs out of lithium. It run These all run on remote control airplane batteries. You know, I have... Let me see here. There's the battery in my jacket. And actually, this is like a, just a switch from an old hair dryer because it's nice and big, and I just put that there. And then inside here, let's see if I can take it out so you guys can see it. Inside my suit jacket lies my all the electronics, you know, the Arduino's there hooked up. Um, a lot of my circuits have a lot of capacitors, like, added on because <laughs> it kind of, like, doesn't make the servos get buggy, you know, because, like, if you just hook up servos to an Arduino and then uh, put a battery, it's going to get buggy, especially when you have five or six of them going on, you know. So Why is that? really help, you know. Why is that? Um, uh, I think because there's so much voltage shooting through, then to multiple Ar Arduinos, and then each servo has its own little circuit too, you know, so it's not just like a motor, like a DC motor spinning, you know. So I think there's just all this noise, and the capacitor kind of eases the noise, you know, the capacitor is kind of like a cup of water that just kind of slowly fills up with electricity and just kind of flows over nice and easy. You're kind of just given a little bridge there so it can kind of do something else before it gets to the servo, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. are the, and is your jacket, are all those little tricks still run just on timers? Oh, yeah. All mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, and, like, it takes about three months of performing to get it down to where it's funny, you know, because, like, mm -hmm. if it's just going off, people are like, who cares, you know? So, mm -hmm. like, when I'm doing it, I have the whole shtick with it, too. You have to, you know, so. Yeah. Wow, I've never really revealed all this stuff. This is kind of freaking me out. Like, yeah, this is so, like, it's One of our campers. Wants to know. All right, so there. <laughs> <laughs> One of our campers wants to know: Have you ever been off with your timing before? Oh yes, I have. Yes, it's been. It's you know, people say in magic, you want to see a true magician and how good he is. You watch a magician when he fails, you know. And I think that's with any performance. Like, how does he get back up, you know? And I've had instances with my signs. Like, all of a sudden, I don't know, there was some wire that was not hooked up to one of the servers. It actually happened to me two days ago. The suitcase didn't shut at the grand finale, and everyone just kind of stood like, okay, you know, and, but you just quickly move on, and you jump into another routine, and, and you know what? You get better and better, because when you first start anything, you're going to mess up, you know, and you get discouraged, mm -hmm. but as you realize and accept it, that we all are going to mess up, it's the only way we get good at something. The only way, you know? Yeah, it's that's part of the game. Hard. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So anyway, you just keep you you know you just keep pushing on. That's all. You know. Awesome. We got a question here. Uh, Pratha is wondering how long have you been doing this? A magic? Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, combining uh, electronics and and a magic show. Um, I, my wife and I, Katie, we quit our day job seven years ago in September. This September will be seven years. We were, I was in college to be a teacher. She was, like, working in Manhattan <clears throat> with another advertising company, and we just took a risk. And, uh, I, you know, I started developing the show using, like I said, cookie-cutter tricks. And it's only been the past three years that I really took big risks with electronics and just trying to – because there was no inspiration. I didn't have anyone to look to, like, oh, this guy did it, and he's, like, 55, so I can do it too. It was really scary. You know, you had it amazing. You know, and testing things out slowly and uh, – so I would say about three years. You know, it's been about three years where I've really adapted electronics to my magic. Nice. Cool. Um, we have also some campers wondering if you've ever used any touch sensors with your tricks. Um, I've used touch sensors for tricks, but not for my show that I use all the time. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Touch sensors. What have I used for touch sensors? I think I've made a card rise once. I had a little card machine where someone would pick a card, put it in a box, and, it, and, then, uh, and then I would do, uh, there was some type of secret sensor. Oh, it was a reed switch, and I had a magnet hidden in my hand. So it was not a touch sensor, but, yeah, I'm always thinking about stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good idea, and that's really clever, the whole touch sensor thing. I think there are definitely applications for magic with the touch sensor, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, let's see, True is wondering, how heavy is that jacket? It's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, the epaulets here that are on the side... These are actually cut plywood because I wanted them to always be sure that they would pop up, you know. And then the springs are from a coat hanger. There's a servo. Oh, man, I wish you guys could see it. The light's not the greatest. But anyway, there's a servo there that kind of pushes it out. Um, so, yeah, this stuff starts weighing a lot. And, like, I can't get this dry cleaned either. You know, I have to hand clean it and stuff because right. there's electronics and stuff. But that's okay. Like, it's worth the pain. 
because um, it's a lot of fun to perform. And when you watch kids laughing, it's something that you created from scratch. It's an amazing feel, you know? So it's worth it. It's definitely heavy, though. Yes, that's a good question. <laughs> Uh, looks like we got another question here uh, from Chris. He's wondering, we've seen a suitcase, a hat, and a jacket. How about pants? Ooh. Um, uh, no pants, but I do magic with my shoe, where I make um, uh, I this on one of my shoe place vanish from my hands, and then everyone's looking at my hands, and then the shoelace is all tied up on my shoe at the end of the trick. So I have a gimmick shoe, but I'm not going into the method of that because <laughs> there's, I, it's like my pride and joy and yeah. like I have magicians don't even know how I do it. So maybe yeah, one well, day that'll be another maker camp, you know, special. Yeah. No, we'll just have to uh, go to one of your shows and see it live. Yes, that would be awesome. That would there be you awesome. go. Um, cool. uh, so you have a thousand different magic tricks out here that are all powered by Arduino and they're all uniquely cool. How do you come up with this stuff? I mean, like, I can't even imagine, like, coming up with that suitcase, you know? Like, where do you find your inspiration from? Well, that's a great question, man. I, there's a magician named the Great Ballantyne. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him, but to magicians, they know him. He's the first Las Vegas magician that was ever booked in Vegas. And, uh, he, he opens his act. He's all just like, like I said, he messes up every trick. Like he shows his hat empty, but there's a hole in it, you know, and everyone's like, what are you doing? And then he sticks his hand down and his whole hand goes into the hat down into the table to pull out a bunny, you know. And, and like, but he, in the beginning of his trick, he has a sign where it says the great Valentine, world's greatest magician, you know. And uh, so, and, and there was a few other magicians that have signs that they kind of hold in their hands when they first come on stage. So that always stuck in my head, like, if I had a sign, if Mario the Magician had a sign, how would he have it, you know? And, and then that's when I was thinking, like, it's got to be electronic, it's got to be a, into a trick, not just a sign, you know? And So that's how that started. Um, uh, yeah, so it, all different things, man. I, I'll be honest with you, like, I don't like labels. I, if I'm interested in something, I chase after it. For example, I just made my first pair of jeans, like... Just because I don't understand how jeans work. So I took apart a pair of jeans, like piece by piece, and I was like, oh, this is how these turns work and these curves work. And so like and then that inspires me into magic somehow. You know, I just I always if there's any advice I always think of is like just to not be afraid to take risks in learning new things because we're never too old for that, you know? There you go. So on that same topic, don't be afraid to take risks. Don't be afraid to jump out there and try it. How many times did it take you to get that suitcase? Uh, trick right. I mean, how many iterations, how many yeah. Arduinos did you burn out? Yeah. You know, like... Oh, it was painful, man. I'll be honest with you. It was very... It, it was like a good solid six months of just... Um, sometimes I one of the signs would have took too long to fall and I was over-exaggerating the gag and I, it was like an awkward silence and then I knew after the show I had to code that and recode it and but I mean, looking back on it, I'm glad it's all over, you know, but it, it was a long road. But that's the only way we create something great, you know, is by suffering, right? And it's like you got to just, you build it, you, know, you fail, and then you just keep your head up, you know. And, and now I have this great piece that sets me apart, and I'm really excited about it, you know. So it Seriously, it. that is something to be proud of right there. It's, I'm <laughs> genuinely <laughs> impressed. It's pretty wild. Uh, looks like we have a question here from, uh, from a camper. Uh, True is wondering, how do you practice? Uh, do you look in the mirror, uh, or do you? How do you get ready for a show? Basically, is how it's what is that? Um, uh, yeah, that's a great question. How do I get ready? Yeah, I know. I practice and I keep. Uh, yeah, a mirror is really important, when, especially when I first started. But honestly, it's like playing a musical instrument. When you first start, you have to practice a ton, you know, and then you get nervous when you're first on stage. But, but then there's, you reach a time where you just memorize everything. And you go into like a machine mode where you have it all memorized and then you can dance around the moment, you know, and be spontaneous. And then you always come back to your foundation of what you've been performing for the past a thousand times, you know. And, and so that's where I'm at now where it's like I've done the show maybe over, a, a, I've done the show for a long time. And so, but yeah, you still get nervous, you know, you still get nervous and, uh, and you've got to be aware of the changes. Like, you know, I have to update my stuff. That's why everything has just, masking tape and hot glue. Like, everything's hot glued for a reason. I didn't use epoxy because then I'd be in big trouble. So when the motor breaks, I get a heat gun and I heat up the hot glue and it nice, it comes off nice and easy. I replace it, you know? So that, that, it's like a living, breathing thing, you know? Speaking of living and breathing things, what about your monkey? 
Should we, oh, yeah. uh, you want to show us your grand market? finale? Yeah. yeah. You guys, all right, so let's get into this. Um, uh, all right, let's get into Marcel the Mechanical Monkey. Marcel the Mechanical Monkey, I love it. Yes. Marcel the Mechanical Monkey. Um, let me get my can here. Go. And this. Give me one second here. I should have had yeah, this. You, do you want a minute to uh, set up? We can uh, show off our project. Oh, yeah. You want to do that? You guys yeah, have to talk sure. about a project you said? Let's do that, and then you can okay. have the, the grand, grand finale. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right, cool. Sounds good. I'll get this ready. Cool. All right. So we're having Eloy come around, and he's going to show us about the magic cube. Hey, campers. Today, I got for you... It's a magic photo cube. <laughs> so this is basically eight wooden blocks, and you take clear packaging tape to create hinges. And the clear packaging tape goes on each side. And you take your pictures, and you cut them out, which is, I think, the hardest part. As you can see, my cutting skills aren't too Good great. Job. Good job, Eloy. Uh, I know you messed up on my face on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you just... Tape all the pictures you want on there, and oh, cool. you have a photo cube. Awesome. Is how many cute? sides does it does it have? It like how many full 12, images? Twelve uh, pictures or twelve four four cube okay. sides. Nice. Very so cool. was it confusing trying to figure out like where to put all the pictures? Yeah, it was actually. <laughs> it takes. It, you should you should have some forward planning because otherwise you end up with. Four robots side by side, or two robots. Gotcha. You want to kind of walk us through uh, the setup there, um, Eloy? You you're taking wooden blocks, and you're you're printing out images, whatever you want, and then you're you're taping it onto the the sides of the cubes. Well, uh, you stack the cubes. Um, you stack the little wooden blocks in a cube like this. And on our online instructions, it tells you exactly where to put the clear tape for the hinges. And once you have the hinges, you print and cut your images. And you have to put them in little squares, and you glue them to the wood blocks. You don't tape them. Oh, gotcha. Glue, OK. Yeah. Great. So the glue so, can get a little tricky, too, because if you don't have your pictures cut out perfectly, they'll just hang over the side and look kind of... Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so do you have any other... Tips and tricks for uh, for building Just that project. Plan it out. <laughs> that's yeah. that's the that's the big tip is plan everything out. Otherwise, you have a funny 40 cube. Gotcha. And we can find those uh, those directions and the plans on the Maker Camp community site as well as MakerCamp.com, right? Yes, correct. Awesome. Cool. Well, I look forward to seeing that cube uh, in real life in just a few minutes here. Uh, how you doing, Mario? You all set there? Yeah. Awesome, looking that. good. Um, uh, are you guys ready here? Yeah. yeah. Right, Can you so tilt me... tilt uh, the camera down just a smidge? Yeah. Nice. Is that good? Looks great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, this is Marcel. I'm just going to show you up close. The only things that are not 3D printed is his hands are from a 60s uh, monkey. And they were just <laughs> so cool that I had to use them. And same with his feet. Oh, but all, all of his arms, I had to custom design stuff on Tinkercad to fit um, each servo, so, so I have a lot of movement. And same with his waist. And then there's a 3D printed box that holds all the electronics, the Arduino. And uh, I have two battery packs. It was the only way to do this. I have one battery pack that just powers the servos because there's so many servos at the same time. Because it's so tiny and compact, um, it needed more enough energy to all work together. So I have one 9-volt battery that just powers the Arduino, and I have a 6-volt battery pack that uh, feeds into the servos. And then everything is grounded together. So it's all kind of like one circuit, but it's got two battery packs on it. Um, uh, all right. So, yeah, like I said, this is done for kids. So um, bear with me, you know, with the comedy, OK? Oh, no, this is great. <laughs> this is great. But, uh, so this is kind of like what I do. I, I introduce, I say, like, you know, every Magician needs a good assistant, and this is my best assistant, uh, Marcel the Mechanical Monkey. Let me turn him on. Marcel. There he is, little Marcel. All right. Can you guys see him moving around a little bit there? Yeah. Hi, Marcel. <laughs> um, uh, Marcel, there he goes. Mr. Mar hey, you're going to fall over Marcel. Be careful there, Marcel. Marcel, look at me. Hey, Marcel, 
Um, wave hello to everyone in the world right now, and then they'll all wave hello at you. So if he waves hello at you there, you know, just uh, wave hello there to my son, the mechanical monkey. There he is. And he's going to put this red ball inside. Uh, Marcel? Hey, Marcel. You don't have to wave anymore, okay? We're going get, to get on here. The people are watching. Anyway, uh, Marcel's going to put this awesome ball inside. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> What am I dealing with here? Okay, let me see. Marcel, look at me. Hey, Marcel, am I the greatest magician in the world? Yes or no? See, he says yes because he absolutely loves me, okay? <laughs> Fantastic. Marcel, are you going to follow directions? Yes or no? Yeah, and he says yes because he is going to follow directions. This is going to be fantastic. <laughs> As I was saying, here, Marcel, look at me, please, Marcel. Put the ball inside the can, and everyone in the world will clap their hands. All right, so there, he's looking at the ball in the can, and uh, here he goes. I don't even have to watch him. He's going to put it up. Don't eat the ball, Marcel. <laughs> Seriously, I don't even have to watch. He's going to put the ball in the can. It would be fantastic. Uh, okay, <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> Anyway, you're starting to get the idea of the pattern here. Um, uh, I'll go through a little bit more. If you guys are getting bored, tell me, okay? No, so here, no. Marcel, I need you to focus. I need you to concentrate. I want you to put the ball inside the can. I want you to think. I want you to focus. Put the ball in the can. Don't <laughs> anything else but the ball in the can, all right? There, are you making fun of me, Marcel? Yes, this is terrible. Anyway, he's going to do it, I promise. Here you go. Oh, come on, Marcel! <laughs> This worst, is terrible! Worst assistant ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you get the stick. I mean, this goes on for about three minutes, and uh, it's a lot of fun live. This is where I get really mad, and I say to him, you know, like, Marcel, this is terrible. You're, this, you're just the worst listener, and I'm very upset at you, and then I'm not going to play with you anymore, and then he, you know, gets really upset. <laughs> uh, and then I say, Marcel, I'm sorry. That was really mean to me. I shouldn't have said that. Do you forgive me, Marcel? And he does not forgive me, okay? <laughs> Marcel, I'll tell you what, if you put the ball inside the can, everyone will clap their hands all across the world, and I'll give you a banana at the end of this whole experience, okay? <laughs> all right, you ready for this? All right, I think he's going to do it, guys. We'll give him one more try, all right? <laughs> all right, Marcel. Ball in the can. Let's see if you can do it. Go ahead, Marcel. you got to focus. That's right, Marcel. Focus. You got this, Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, that's kind of the gist of it, and uh, yeah, he signs off too. <laughs> I hope you guys can see that, you know. But um, uh, yeah, this was a lot of work. This is probably the most complicated thing I've ever, ever built. So there you have it, uh, Marcel the mechanical monkey. <laughs> That's awesome. Very impressive. So the majority of those parts you say were three D printed. Oh, yeah, like 90% 90 90 of it. Like, all the plastic that moves these servos were, are all held together by uh, 3D printed parts. If you think about it, an automate, like an animatronic thing like this would cost around $1,500, you know, like yeah. starting price, you know? So the fact that I'm, like, bypassing all this stuff and just 3D printing these parts and designing them, I'm bypassing this whole thing, you know? And, and it's really exciting, you know, because uh, I don't have $1,500 all the time. So. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway... It's cool, and like I'm thinking about making this all open source, where like I just give out all the files on Thingiverse, you know, and just because it's like that's what it's about, you know. And, yeah, yeah, uh, sharing. And maybe other people could come up with other comedy, because I had other bits that he does where he does karate and he does like Gangnam style, you know, but then it was just too crazy, so I kind of simplified it. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. So Mario, um, I think that's about all the time we have today. Unfortunately. Uh, I wish I could see your entire show. Uh, maybe I'll fly out to New York. Are you going to be at Maker Faire, New York? I, I might be, yeah. I might be, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll catch yeah. each other there. Thank you guys so much. You guys blessed me today, seriously. Oh, it's, it's the same way I had such a great time. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for joining us. Uh, do you, you have a website, obviously. Uh, it's, yes, uh, um, mariothemagician.com. And right now, uh, my wife is running a Kickstarter campaign because we have a five-minute documentary and we're trying to make it into a full feature. So if anyone out there, mariothemagician.com, watch the trailer. If it's something that inspires you, you know, check it out. All right? Um, uh, thank you guys for this opportunity. You really did. You made my day. So thanks. Absolutely. Thank thanks, you. man. Thank you. We'll be talking with you soon, Mario. All right. Thanks for joining us. All right. All right, campers. Um, so yeah, we just talked with Mario the Magician and uh, we saw all of his amazing Arduino-powered projects. I'm super inspired now to go out and make my own little contraptions. 
Uh, I'm sure you guys are too. So uh, if you come up with anything uh, within the next few weeks, definitely post it on the Maker Camp community page. Share it with everybody. Like Mario said, sharing is super important. That's pretty much half of the fun is sharing. So um, yeah, what do you, uh, counselors? What do you think? That was pretty cool, huh? That was. I really liked the monkey at the end. Yeah, yeah sure, I thought sure. that was awesome. Like, I love magic tricks, and like, I love how his are all like it's not just sleight of hand, although he is good at that too. Like, it's just all the little electronics and the timing is really impressive. Yeah, totally. I think my favorite was his hat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the ball. Yeah. yeah. All right, campers and counselors. Uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, we will see you tomorrow for day two of fun and games. Catch you then. Woo. Bye. Bye.